Hello, I'm Donna Collins, Executive Director of the Ohio Arts Council. Welcome to the OAC's Arts Beacon of Light, Finding Hope in the New Normal. This project was inspired by our board member, Tina Houston. Through the Ohio Arts Beacon, we aim to give our artists a place to share, connect, and cope with the challenges presented by COVID-19. We hope to inspire you while giving artists a platform for connection, expression, and encouragement. So let's get started. Today, I'm joined by Ohio magic maker, Patty Mitchell. <laughs> Welcome, Patty. Hi, Donna. It's good to be with you. It's always a good day when I'm with you. Mm. Patty, let me give our listeners your brief bio, which will be hard because there's nothing brief about you. Um, and then if you'll be so kind to add anything that you want to add that I may have forgotten. So Patty's the executive uh, director and founder of Passionworks Studio in Athens, Ohio. And for more than two decades, she has provided her gifts to the world as an artist and social innovator, whose greatest gift, in my opinion, is fostering collaborations between artists with and without perceived differences. She's the CEO of Creative Abundance Consulting, which provides consultation to organizations dedicated to advancing community collaborative arts programming. Patty's numerous honors include a Distinguished Alumna Award from Ohio University's College of Fine Art, an Ohio Anna Citation for Art Education Citizen of the Year from Civitan, the Keynote Award from Ohio University for Outstanding Community Service, an Individual Artist Award from the Ohio Arts Council, and she is a 2004 Governor's Award winner in Community Development and Participation. Patty received her BFA and MFA from Ohio University and is currently a Community Fellow with the Barbara Gerald Storytelling Institute at OU. Phew, Patty. Do you ever sleep or eat or rest? <laughs> Go ahead. Did I miss something important you want to share with our listeners? I, don't, I, I think you've got it there, Donna. It was <laughs> <laughs> interesting to hear it all together. It's like, oh, huh, yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty impressive uh, brief bio, I'd, I'd say. Well, in preparing for our conversation today, I was thinking about how whenever I see you or talk with you, the wheels are always spinning. I know you're thinking things like, what else can I do? Who else can we serve? How can I get so-and-so to help us create this new thing? And what, what about this important thing we have to do that brings joy to people's lives? And I think it really began when you were a student at OU. So if you will, will you indulge us and tell us the story of your time on the ridges at the Athens Mental Health Center, and why did you choose to live there for a year? People watching and listening will be fascinated by your story. Well, let's see. Yep, I came to Ohio University in 1983. I was 17 years old, and um, I had a brother who was institutionalized. And so growing up, I just was fascinated and um, well, I guess it's fascinated. I was obsessed with the idea of institutionalization and what that meant and where was he. And it was very mysterious. And so I was um, aware of our differences due to um, how we were born and um, the bodies and the minds that we were <clears throat> introduced to on, on coming onto this earth. And so uh, through high school, I worked with people with disabilities and developmental differences. And when it came to OU, um, uh, there was an opportunity to volunteer at the Ridges. It was the Athens Mental Health Center at the time. My second year as a sophomore, I was invited to live on ward in exchange for room and board. So it was either live in the dorms or live at the mental health center. And I chose the mental health center. And uh, I am so glad I did. It was, um, I had to, you know, it was, it was like, whoa, but it's so worth it. It was amazing and I learned so much um, by being there and it has affected the rest of my life. Patty, tell us a little more about um, while you were there what your responsibilities were um, with the residents at the medical center. I think that's where it, you, I begin to fall in love with what you do and why you do it, if you would. 
you know, I was studying photography at Ohio University. I've, I'm not trained as a social worker. I'm not trained as um, a rec therapist or anything like that. I'm um, encouraged as a maker. And so I brought art, but I was learning in the art, um, my art classes onto the ward. And I found that just being really with another person and making, and which was just drawing, we would just sit and draw. We didn't have to talk. We could, we could investigate ideas, but really the most important thing was just to being connected. And that <clears throat> ease of connection came by having that thing to do, which was um, to make. And when I saw people really um, shift and come to life and be able to be still by drawing, I was like, okay, that's it. This is what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life. I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna figure it out because this is powerful. Patty, my first encounter with you was at an OAC event, a teacher and teaching artist event that used to happen each fall back in the good old days, where you presented about the power of people when they were given the opportunity and the freedom to be creative. So talk about those early days as a teaching artist and how that impacted your life's decisions as an artist and a creative. And if you'd like, maybe those early days creating passion works. That's a lot to ask you to say all in one answer, but it's a great story. <laughs> so, yes, I remember you presented at that conference, didn't you? Is that the uh, one? No. Yes, I did. I think so. But I was in awe. It was like, oh, I have to follow this lady who's just mesmerized the entire audience. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, um, it's an interesting thing to uh, make by yourself, you know, because you have to study, you have to practice, you know, and then bring others into um, your world, as it were. And in photography, we had the dark room. And so we would photograph and we would collaborate maybe in, on a shoot and do different things, but we had each other in the dark room. And upon graduating, you know, it, that was gone. If I had a dark room, I was by myself. And I thought, hmm. And I remember OAC um, folks came down to Ohio University and did a presentation about artist in residence work. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I was like, right there, that's it. And um, it, it formed my decision to stay in Ohio. I grew up out on the East Coast. And um, I said, if I can work in this state in this capacity, I'm staying. So I made it my business to figure out how to become an artist in residence. Um, with the Ohio Arts Council. And luckily, my first residency was with um, Jean Reinbolt in Houston, uh, Houston, sorry, <laughs> Houston people, <laughs> um, Houston, Ohio. And she was uh, an experienced educator and experienced with residencies. And that it was magical. It was absolutely magical working with our high school students. And I was like, okay, I found my people. And, and basically it's, it was such a puzzle to figure out how to involve 350 people in, in an art project. How do you do that? You know? And, um, and over time I got to learn by doing and, and then have the experience of doing it. And then the byproduct of the art to show the, the evidence of what that experience was and how, um, students would come to life. They were like, nobody's ever told me I was good at anything. I mean, it would just break my heart, you know, because when I was coming up through school, um, my reading skills were terrible. My math skills were, were are terrible. Um, and I didn't know that ideas and being able to build things and communicating were as powerful or sometimes more powerful than the things that academia was saying was the, the all. I thought I would end up under a bridge um, the way that the education system was. And I, I said, if I can give any of these kids hope to see that their creativity and their problem solving is what's going to carry them, um, I became a little obsessed. And, um, and so that was a huge motivator for me. And, and then learning how to bring a community together by making with their students was like, whoa, this is a powerful vehicle to uh, develop community identity, um, bonding, you know, because we're all separate doing our thing, but we can create these nuggets of opportunity to just show that we are together. And um, making, making stuff was like, okay, 
<laughs> I can do this. So, yeah. And, and then, of course, you know, with an interest in working with um, students with uh, different needs, that became very I, integral. Before I started anything, I said, these kids are going to be in the, pro you know, that was, you know, I did it gently, but that was going to happen. And, um, and then it grew from there. You have to talk a little bit about passion works. Have you heard about passion works? <laughs> what do you want funny. to know, Donna? <laughs> so it began as an art uh, residency with the Ohio Arts Council. So I was very fortunate with the OIC to be invited to do lots of projects. And so I would be gone, I would do four and five different projects through the OIC a year, um, which meant that I was away from home a lot. And I thought, you know, what, what could I do to be here? And uh, the mental health center closed. Um, and so that having a studio up there, that dream dissolved with deinstitutionalization. And somebody said, hey, go check out a sheltered workshop, which I didn't know what that was. But a sheltered workshop is a work environment for people with developmental differences in a factory style setting. And took a tour, saw this giant building with these large tables and these interesting people. And I was like, this is the dream place. Inside that building, I was like, okay, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to creating experiences where people can come up with their own understanding of seeing the world differently. And so um, it became, it, it shifted from really just loving it to an obsession, loving the idea of making art with people with developmental differences to becoming an obsession and a revolution. Because people who um, are perceived as different and have different bodies and different ways of thinking are often excluded from greater society without hesitation. And the greater society doesn't even see these folks. And so there's an assumption that there's something wrong with them. And how, how can you blossom when you're under that heavy weight? So we have uh, dedicated ourselves to grow and create the evidence of brilliance and amazement and beauty and connection and purpose by uh, having a thriving studio. And that's what we do. I love it. And that's what we do. That's Patty Mitchell in a nutshell. I like that. <laughs> so our world has changed a little bit since February uh, in lots of different ways. And I know that PassionWorks, like the rest of us, has been impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. Um, talk a little bit about how the crisis has impacted you, um, your ability to work with your artists and to have um, the studio open, uh, and, and anything you want to share about how you've been able to make connections where it's possible and still keep people safe and uh, their joy factor up. Right, so the studio is no longer in a sheltered workshop. It's in its own space, Uptown Athens, 20 East State Street, um, Athens, Ohio, right behind the gas station. Beautiful, beautiful spot. And it's, oh, we just love our studio. We're right uptown. <clears throat> and so one of the first things we realized is that we have sewers on our team and masks were, coming up as something that was needed. So we, um, we started to organize and collect materials because as you remember, like we couldn't order 40 yards of elastic. We couldn't order, you know, we had to scrounge and through Ohio University, um, Matt Thompson in the collab, uh, he helped bring materials to us. He, le he leveraged a grant that he had and said, okay, we're gonna make it work for, you know, finding some funds to immediately go and we did research and we started and we just started making masks and we asked our community to help us and we did a GoFundMe page, which is still active um, with our mask making and we've made over 3,500 masks. So that was one of the things that was very different for us at the beginning to, to make this um, thing that we had never done before. And, but we're doing things we've never done before all the time. That's what we are as artists. We were supposed to have a, over at the Zenner house with Jeff Chaddock, a kickoff to our endowment party. And then COVID happened 
And instead of just saying, wah, wah, you know, I guess that's not going to happen. So what are we going to do? What else can we have this opportunity? What can we do? So we had a parade in place because we make giant puppets and we make giant dolls and we make giant things. And we had all the puppets and the dolls and the things in the front lawn of the beautiful Zenner House in Athens, Ohio, and then invited the community to be the parade or the moving part of the event. And they came through in their cars and on bikes at safe distances and saw the puppets in place. And um, we had giant bubbles and unicycle puppet go. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was so much fun. And, um, and as people were driving by, they had the opportunity to donate or to learn more about the studio with handouts. But the people who were get, you know, collecting, they said so many people were in tears at the end of that parade. And, and I'm sure everybody has their own reason, but I think it was that feeling of connectivity and joy and beauty and the evidence of our spirit here down in Athens. And I love that we're part of that, to be able to create those kinds of moments so that when people remember COVID, they can talk about this beautiful moment together, not just about isolation and how hard it was. Patty, I love that the studio um, has left the building. Really, that's what you're saying, is the studio is not the building, but the people. And um, that's always what you're about, is the people. And so I continue to be humbled by your generosity and your care and your love of so many um, and in some cases who have never felt love until they got that from you or never felt success from um, the teachers and, and your leadership. I, I know that you're going to say, Donna, it's not all me, but you're the leadership that makes it possible for people to come together and do that work. So thank you for that. Um, let's take a second here and shift gears because um, we could talk about Passionworks all day. I know we could. Patty, you're engaged in so many creative endeavors, Honey for the Heart, Creative Abundance, Turn It Gold, and many others. Pick a project that's meaningful to you as an artist, um, for you, for Patty Mitchell, um, and share your creative process and the impact it has had on you. Well, um, one of them is uh, Honey for the Heart, which is a uh, giant puppet-making pop-up project of Passionworks. And some may have heard about Athens Halloween. Maybe that's something that is infamous within, within our borders. And um, I had, was doing a project with the Minneapolis Institute of Art, and it just so happened I was there when the May Day Parade was happening. And I watched, I sat and watched a two hour parade of giant puppets made by the community. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what Athens needs, right? So, so whenever you wanna do, like I just, I think having objects come to life is pretty amazing, you know? And, and so whenever you wanna do something, figure out how it's relevant to somebody else. And then you can partner and find funding and make what you want to have happen, happen. It's, um, and so we went, I went to the university and I said, hey, what if we change the narrative? We just shifted it from a drunken, crazy party to a giant art making parade where the students were involved in the community. And when the Columbus Dispatch comes down here to report on our town, it's about beauty and wonder and spectacle. And um, they said, okay, give it a try. And so we um, received funding through Arts for Ohio and for Ohio University Learning Communities and the Ohio Arts Council. And we put on a three week giant puppet making project that turns into this parade. And, um, and this is um, our eighth year, which means that we've had two generations of um, OU students come through. So now it's just a thing. Of course it is just there and I love that I love that we can build a culture of just of course that's what happens does um, and then those puppets were invited to go to the Nelsonville Music Festival we decorated for there. brew week on Court Street Earth Day we're called constantly so those puppets have elevated the studio to make it easier for us to participate in community events we don't have to build anything we've already made it and so 
people are asking specifically for um, our puppets. And um, super fun, you know, super fun. A lot of work, who cares? Super fun. I have seen those puppets up close and personal. And if folks want to see puppets, they could visit Passionworks. There's one right there. And uh, if you've not been to the Passionworks studio, I understand right now you can window shop, but I love my jewelry, note cards, passion flowers, bags. It, you just can't help yourself. Go visit Passionworks. <laughs> and if you can't come to us, you can go online. Look at that. We're always Perfect. open 24 seven <laughs> because by creating product, um, we were also creating employment. And then we were also creating the evidence of value to people who are in, not, in, not valued. And so when we make a sale, it's not just about making money so we can buy more paintbrushes. To me, in my gut, it is showing the world that if, who, is, who gets to be a viable citizen? Is it somebody who attracts economy? Well, if that's the case, we will track economy. We've um, made these passion flowers. Um, we've made over 30,000 of them, well over $1.75 million in those flowers. They're the official flower of Athens, Ohio, and they've created um, employment. They're a green product made out of printing plates from the Athens Messenger. And, you know, if, if that makes us viable, cool. You know, what do, what do we have to do to prove ourselves to be able to be um, active participants within our own communities? So, um, so the sales of products carry the, the story of the studio with it, wherever they go. And then our customers become our sound, they, they become our storytellers. It's fantastic. Um, and it's, it's really exciting and fun to do product development. Yes, it is for sure. So Patty, um, for some folks, the story becomes more real when they know about that economic impact. For individuals and businesses, you know, when we're fully opened and engaged, and as you said, you're open 24 seven on the internet, but it's the creative enterprise that makes the difference. So would you take a minute and talk about the economic impact you've seen over time with the various projects and outreach efforts you've been involved with? I think folks would be really curious to know about that economic impact. You know, it, it would be, it would, what a study to figure out how, the impact of passion works um, down here in Southeast Ohio. We're in Appalachia. We're in a region that, um, you know, we are in an economically stressed space, um, historically coal mining areas, and that's not coming back. And, um, and so, but something else can fill that void of, um, filling our economy. And we, we do believe that um, the creative economy, we have a lot of incredibly creative, interesting people down here. Um, and, and so with the studio, making it irresistible so that, you know, if people are deciding where they're going to take a day trip and, it, and it's tipped because oh, we can go by passion works. Oh, we can go to Casa Nueva and have a beautiful lunch and look at all the artwork there. We can tour the university. There's Passionworks art is all over this town. So we're responding constantly to our community and that economic impact, I'm, we've made our own way and um, we've helped and partnered with other businesses and they've helped us. I don't know, Donna Collins. I mean, we, we, want, we want to keep selling. We want to expand. We want to create jobs and employment and joy. And uh, what else are we going to do? See what I mean, folks, about the joy factor and the inspiration and the we can do anything attitude. I love that. So, Patty, now I want to talk about something personal. We've spent most of our time talking about your role as an artist, a self starter, a change maker, a magic maker at almost everything. And I love to turn to self-care for a moment. What advice do you have for us about the importance of self-care, especially in this time when we're not being able to go out as we typically would or gather in groups or participate? Now it's getting better, but we also want to be able to emulate a bit of what you're doing to main that, maintain your joy factor and find a little bit of that for ourselves. And I don't know any better teacher than you. 
<laughs> well, you know, this, it's, um, you know, when you give a gift of making or doing something in your community or for another person, I really believe it's evidence of your spirit and saying, I see you and I love you. That's, that's what we do all day long in the studio when we're making. You know, with self-care, it's an interesting one, Donna, because it's like, how do you balance, you know, just keep going so that your body can keep making, you know, as long as you can keep going. And you mentioned um, turn it gold, you know, because 11 years ago I had cancer treatments. And now we're doing turn it gold, which is um, childhood cancer awareness. And we're partnering with Ohio University. And it's like my experience with cancer and it's hard, <laughs> you know, it informed my approach and the importance of finding something to celebrate during the process. And so when we started working with Turn It Gold, we started making banners and um, flags and all these different things. Um, a family in town, uh, their son was diagnosed with a very, very um, powerful cancer. And, <clears throat> and so then it became personal and specific. And, uh, and we were able to help lift this family up. Um, and when we made these uh, turn of gold, these gold ribbon banners, and they were on all the light posts in town and on Richland Avenue Bridge, they were having an event at the Convo Center. And he said, driving across the bridge and seeing all these banners was like walking on the red carpet. And I just thought, oh, how great. Like we can take some fabric, put some love into it and some paint and create that kind of moment for that child and the family. We have the parts and pieces to collaborate with others to make really important moments happen. And, um, and so for self-care, it's just keep, just keep swimming, you know, just keep swimming. If self-care truly is how you describe it, the rest of us need to get busy because I think that we spend so much time on the rigid things that we must do. And that's okay. There, there are those parts of your world too. But no matter what, everything you've described during our conversation today is about finding the joy. You know, we can see the world and, and our lives as abundant, or we can see it as a scarcity model and that you have to hold on to what you have and keep it tight. And as soon as you realize, as soon as you give something away, you just make more of it, you know? It's not, and it has a new life and more comes back around. And, and so we are a completely... We, we meditate, and live and dream in the idea of abundance. And that the more that is we share, we double the pleasure and, and more can come and happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's fun. I mean, why go through all of this, doing the dishes, eighth grade, making sure everything is neat and clean if you're not going to have joy? Hey, I want to tell you, I remember you visited me on my first day of work on July 1st, 2014, and said, I had to come here. I had to welcome you as the new director. I had to say hello, and I wanted to make sure what our, you know what our priorities are at Passion Work. I was like, she's a go-getter. And I'd known you so <laughs> long uh, before that, that I thought, she didn't really have to come here to see me. I already know the story but it was important to you and you made the trip. And then a few days later, the door rings and there you are with a banner for the Ohio Arts Council. And Patty, I, I'm not sure if you've been at the office. Well, I know you haven't been there since February, but that banner still hangs in our reception area today. And it is who we are. It's the beauty and the joy that um, public funding represents to a constituent and her team. And so it reminds us every time the visitors or the staff see it about the joy factor that you help provide to people in Ohio and really around the world. So thank you for that. I was uh, in a meeting and somebody came in and said, 
it, it was announced somebody opened the door and said donna collins is the new director and i like leaped out of my chair like it was like a spring like i just was so happy that you were going to be in this position and um and i and i hope it's i hope it's been a fun ride i know it's a lot of work friend i know it's a lot of work but we out here appreciate it oh you're so kind it's the best days of my life i am surrounded by brilliant smart creative people uh on our team at the arts council as well as around the state and uh yeah, life doesn't really get any better than where I'm at in my career. So thank you for allowing me to serve in that way. It's yeah, I work for you and uh, it's an honor. So, hey, I think that they're going to have us wrap up pretty soon. So let me say this. It's been a wonderful conversation. Thank you for being with us. Patty, you are a beacon of light and together we are finding hope in what is to be our next normal. For more inspiration and stories from our Arts Beacon of Light, Finding Hope in the New Normal Project, we welcome you to visit the OAC at oac.ohio.gov forward slash Ohio Arts Beacon. You can also follow us on Instagram at Ohio Arts Beacon. We hope you'll submit your stories and share the light in your world with all of us. Until next time, let's all find hope in the next normal. And remember, the arts in Ohio are better when we work together. <laughs>